In the last video, we learned about how for a moving observer, time slows down and lengths contract. Einstein just couldn't make sense of these strange results until he realized the following thing, that there is no fact of the matter about whether two spatially separated events, like the snapping of fingers, happen at the same time. In this video, we're going to learn about the relativity of simultaneity. Hello folks and welcome back. I'm Brian Roberts. Let's start with a little warm-up exercise. You're walking to the park from home and your house is about a mile away from the entrance to the park. Your friend is walking to the park as well, but she lives 10 miles away from the park. You both walk at exactly the same speed, but you arrive at the park's entrance at the same time. How is that possible? Your friend must have started out earlier. If two bodies travel at the same speed and arrive at the same time, but one had farther to go, that one must have started earlier. This fact, together with the light postulate, is what gives rise to the relativity of simultaneity. It's one of the most important facts about special relativity. To understand it, we have to first say what we mean by simultaneity. For thousands of years, it just seemed obvious. Two things are simultaneous if they happen at the same time. What else is there to say? I'm simultaneously intrigued and confused. What does it mean for two spatially distant events to be simultaneous? Well, Einstein imagined it like this. Okay, we're gonna need two events. Let's take a first kiss in Paris and a first kiss in London. Suppose that a light bulb flashes next to each event the moment that the event occurs. And let's imagine that there's a person placed halfway between the two events. Where's halfway between Paris and London? I think somewhere in the English Channel. Maybe it's a person on a raft. We'll say that what it means for the events to occur simultaneously is that the person placed halfway between them receives those light beams at the very same time. Makes sense. The two bulbs flashed simultaneously, a person halfway between not to receive the light beams at the same time. Now here's where it gets strange. Suppose these two pairs of lovers are in motion, not at rest. Let's say they're on a giant platform which stretches from London to Paris and the platform is moving at very close to the speed of light. It's another thought experiment, but stick with me. If the platform is moving from London towards Paris, then the observer in the middle is rushing away from the London light beam and rushing towards the Paris light beam. That means that the London light beam has farther to go in order to reach the observer. And the Paris light beam has less distance to go in order to reach the observer. Now the light postulate says that both these light beams must be traveling at the same speed. And they both arrive at their destination at the same event. Do you remember our warm-up from the beginning? Two bodies traveling the same speed that arrive at their destination at the same time, but one has farther to go. That one must have started out earlier. So when that platform is in motion, I can no longer say that the two events, that first kiss in Paris and the first kiss in London, happen at the same time. That first kiss in London must have happened earlier than the first kiss in Paris, so that the light beams could set out and arrive at the person in the middle of the platform at the same event. Why is London different than Paris? Why does London happen first? It just depends on the direction of motion. Suppose this giant platform were moving inertially in the opposite direction, from Paris towards London. Now an observer observing this platform whiz by will say that the Paris kiss happened before the London one did. Wait a minute. So do these first kisses happen at the same time or not? Who fell in love first? Well, that depends on who you ask. There is no fact of the matter about whether these two events occurred simultaneously. One observer will judge that they did happen, and the other observer will judge that they did not happen simultaneously. Let that sink in for a moment. There is no matter of fact about whether two spatially separated events occur simultaneously. But what about a band in which we're all placed in different parts of the room and we all begin at the same time, simultaneously? That too is not a matter of fact. An observer whizzing by at close to the speed of light would say those band members are out of sync. What about two babies in different hospitals with the same birthday and birth time? That's not a matter of fact either. Whether or not they're really born at the same time depends on which observer you ask. Simultaneity is one of those concepts that we assumed for thousands of years must be absolute, a fact about the nature of the universe. And it wasn't until Einstein in 1905 that we realized that assumption was false. Okay, okay, but maybe it's not so weird, like lightning and thunder. Usually I see the flash of lightning and then I hear the thunder. Maybe relativity of simultaneity is like that. No, it's not like that. The lightning bolt and the thunder crash really do happen at the same time. It's just that light travels a lot faster than sound does through air. And so it seems like the light happened earlier and the thunder happened later. This is just one thing moving slower than the other. But the relativity of simultaneity is deeper than that. 
It's not just that it might seem two events are not simultaneous. Only once we choose an inertial reference frame can we say that two events are simultaneous or not. Now, the relativity of simultaneity is not just weird, it's also useful. It helps us avoid certain paradoxes that might have occurred if we had just left it at length contraction and time dilation. This will help you see part of why Einstein thought the relativity of simultaneity was so important to understanding special relativity. Here's an example of how the relativity of simultaneity really saves the day. Suppose that for my fancy car, I designed an absolutely perfect garage made to fit the car exactly. Down to the millimeter, my garage is the same size as my car. And suppose I have a car door on each side of my garage. Maybe I don't like to back up very much. I am so sorry about your bushes, ma'am. Now I decide to drive my car really fast into my garage at say, 86.6% the speed of light. And imagine I close both doors the moment the car is perfectly inside the garage and then lift them up again so that the car can continue to pass through. Now, if my friend is standing next to the garage watching all this happen, Brian, you park like a maniac. My friend will see a car moving really fast and so it will contract in the direction of motion. Remember length contraction. All bodies contract in the direction of motion. So according to my friend, my car will shrink. How much? It turns out to half its original length. So it's actually just a little short car. Ah, oh, look at your short little car. The car has plenty of room in the garage. The doors close simultaneously, then open again, and the car continues passing through. But now compare that to my perspective driving the car. Relative to me, I'm at rest in the car, and the whole world is whizzing by at 86.6% .6 the speed of light, including the garage. And now that garage, which I had designed to be just the same size as my car, has now contracted in the direction of its motion. It's only half the length that I designed it for, and I couldn't possibly fit the car in this garage. It's too small. But remember the experiment. The doors slam shut the moment the car is completely inside the garage, but the car is never completely inside the garage. If I slam the doors shut while the car is inside, it's just gonna smash my car. How can these perspectives both be possible? Will the doors smash my car or not? Relativity of simultaneity saves the day. The closing doors only seems like a problem if we assume that both doors close at the same time in every reference frame. That is, that they close simultaneously. But we just learned that that's not true. They might close simultaneously for my friend standing next to the garage. From my reference frame, sitting in my car, I see this garage hurtling towards me. And just like the lovers in Paris and London, the events don't happen at the same time. The trailing event of the closing door farthest away from me happens first. The door closes and opens again. Meanwhile, I pass through the garage and make it past the other door when it finally closes and then opens again. The closing of the doors does not happen simultaneously in the driver's reference frame, and so my car doesn't get smashed after all. Thanks, folks. I'll see you next time, but maybe not simultaneously.